I do want to talk to you a little bit about barnyard grass this morning, but not barnyard grass and beans. I want to talk about barnyard grass and rice. Um, we are uh, running into some critical issues with barnyard grass and rice. I, I want to make you aware of a field just north of here, not very far, uh, into Prairie County. We've identified now a, a field of rice that is resistant to, that has barnyard grass in it that's resistant to um, propanil, facet, and nupad. So we've added ALS resistance. Now we have several locations of ALS resistant barnyard grass that have turned up around the state. Uh, this is not to be uh, unexpected with 50% of our acres being in clear field, a big reliance on regiment uh, to clean up some of this barnyard grass and grasp. So we, we've kind of been using this family of chemistry now for several years. Uh, the big concern that I have in seeing these multiple resistant sites, I mean, we've been dealing with facet and propanil resistant barnyard grass for some time, but when we start to see multiple resistance build up, we start to think about what options do we have to come back on some of these fields. My biggest concern is, yeah, we still have a few options for that person. We can come in and put together a weed control program, but what about when one more becomes resistant? What about on down the road? And the bad news is, there's not a lot of new development in chemistry for rice going on right now. We're pretty much going to have to manage barnyard grass, our number one weed in rice, with the existing technology that we have for the foreseeable future. And so you guys that make recommendations need to be aware of that. What you're going to hear from the Extension Service going into 2011 as we all, as the weed scientists get around and, and go to county meetings and give talks and things, we're going to be talking about putting multiple modes of action into these programs where we use new path twice and come back with beyond we're not doing anything for resistance management we're going to talk about using command up front in those programs we're going to talk about pre-emerge and and delayed pre-combinations of, of uh, like prowl and bolero facet prowl command and facet those kind of things to take a multiple mode of action approach to this weed before it gets to the point where nothing works on it um, so that's a big concern of ours in rice. I want to make you also aware, um, how many of you guys remember what it was like to control nut sedge prior to permit in rice? Was it fun? It was tough, wasn't it? Bassagran, propanil, oil, maybe some uh, bolero propanil, try to burn it back. And we've got four or five locations now in the state that we're fairly convinced are ALS resistant rice flat sedge or annual sedge so we're very concerned about the development of this we don't have a lot of good alternatives for sedges in rice be aware that this is a this this is on the radar now typically when i know about it there's more fields out there than what we know so just be aware of that problem in rice um real quickly in soybeans i want to cover one weed primarily and if, i don't know where you drove in from to be at this field day today but odds are you drove past a soybean field somewhere that had palmer amaranth in it um, if you didn't, I'd like to know the route you took because I've been all over the state and I haven't seen one yet. Um, uh, this is an extremely um, exploding problem around the state. It's, it's come up over the last two years. What we're seeing is just one year of having a few survivors out in a soybean field. You run a combine through that. They make about twenty or 30,000 seed per plant. You overseed that field, put it back into Roundup Ready Beans, and boom, you've got a growed up mess the very next year. So it can happen really fast need to be aware of that. You need to be watching these fields, especially ones where you had survivors this year and putting a plan in place um, to control that weed up front next year. What I really encourage you not to do is go out there, put out your first quarter roundup on four or five inch pigweed to find out if they're resistant or not. Because at that point, you're too late to do anything about it if they are. There's nothing in our toolbox, nothing that I can recommend to come back and clean them up. If you think you have a problem, you need to start out with a residual program up front. And really, my the only post-emerge product that I really recommend for pigweed right now is Flexstar. Um, and it needs to go out on about a two to three inch pigweed. That's when we see optimum control. If you call and it's four, five, six inches, we're going to get some of them, but not all. And when we do that, we're asking for resistance to what? The Flexstar. Um, so we really need to be thinking about a pigweed program for, for 2011 and what you're going to do. Um, especially in Roundup Ready and conventional beans. There are good programs to put together. One thing I'll mention, um, one of the best residual products we've looked at is Prefix. Um, it's Reflex and Dual combined. I can't really recommend it to you in Roundup Ready beans though, or conventional. And the reason for that is if you use Prefix, you've used all the Flexstar you're allowed to use for a year, at least all that's gonna do any good. I'd rather see you go with one of the Valor, Valor-containing premixes, straight dual, 
Trefflin or Prowl PPI, there's there's Authority MTZ, there's some other options that have good pigweed control that you can use up front. Save your Flex Star to come back with as your early post, either as a tank mix with Roundup um, or maybe the Flex Star GT premix from Syngenta, something like that. So that's my spill on pigweed and conventional and Roundup ready. To wrap up, I want to mention the new technology in soybeans that's out there, and that's Liberty Link and the herbicide Ignite. Now, a lot of you should be familiar with Ignite. We've been using it for burn down and in, in cotton and in corn for some time. We got a label. We've had it for a couple of years now. We've seen a pretty steady increase in acres. I think those acres are going to go up in 2011, um, even higher with Liberty Link beans. All indications are that they are. Ignite's a very good product. It's not Roundup. Um, it's more of a contact burning type product than, than, than Roundup is. You're going to need to get very good coverage with your spray tips and your and your gallonage that you're using. Um, the Roundup rigs are probably not going to work as good with Ignite as they as they do with glyphosate. You need to watch those, uh, those applications. Um, Ignite will not, just like Flexstar, Ignite's not going to come in and kill a 6, 8, 10 inch tall pigweed with one application. Okay, and we don't want to go there with this technology. From day one, for me, you're going to hear residuals and ignite in the same context. We'd love to see you guys go out with a pre-emerge of some kind after this pigweed and then come back with ignite. If you're not going to do that, at the very least, tank mix a dual with the early post shot or, or flex star or prefix or something like that. We want to start out with multiple modes of action. We're already using this product to come in and clean up something that we have very few answers for, and the last thing we want to see is, is further development of resistance. Now, Ignite will kill a pigweed, but it'll only kill about a two to three inch pigweed. So we want to be talking about putting our first Ignite application out at about seven to 10 days um, after soybean emergence, okay? So we're in a very early post timing with this stuff. And then you come back with the second shot, either as needed or probably 14, 21 days after that. Start out with a residual like prefix, which I do recommend in Liberty Link beans because you're not needing to save your flex star for later. Uh, where we do that, we can go out with prefix and we're looking at maybe 14 to 21 days. So using a residual followed by Ignite buys you time. You're looking at multiple modes of action for resistance and it just makes sense. And so so the university, we're, we're going to be wholeheartedly recommending that and I know Bear Crop Science um, has had residual programs from the beginning in their protocols. So, there's going to be a big push for this resistance management thing as we move forward um, with the lack of a lot of new alternatives coming down the pipeline.